What we're going to do right now is called file optimization. This is probably the most important movie that's going to be on this CD. Uh, SPVR pretty much takes care of everything on its own, kind of automatically. All we have to do is saturate and pump up some stuff. Uh, make it look good but you know what in order for it to look good on press you have to make the image as best as possible before you separate it <clears throat> and that's what we'll cover here this is um, just an RGB uh, TIFF image it's a photograph um, digital photo taken by one of my photography friends Romney Photography uh, he gave it to me to use I like to use this because it's got so much character look at all these little shingles and all this just worn weathered look this is like an oldest building in New Orleans or that's what they tell me. Alright, so we're going to start off with this image. What we're going to do is basically five steps. The steps go in sequence. Um, you want to really try to keep do, try to do them in the in this sequence because um, they do each effect will affect the next step basically. <clears throat> so um, let's go. Let's we, we, first thing we need to do is obviously make sure that we're in an RGB file. This is an RGB TIFF. We're going to go to image adjustments let's come down to selective color this is our selective color window what we want to do right here where it says reds we want to go down to neutrals and I know this says CMYK um, stuff here but it doesn't really matter you're gonna watch the changes take place on screen so what we're gonna do is make sure we can see this little um, these percentage boxes and let's go ahead and put in three throughout the whole thing and it hits the preview button what we're gonna do is turn it off Look at the effect that happens on screen. It starts taking out the gray data. We're eliminating extra white noise or white information that doesn't need to be in there or gray information. And what I usually do is numbers between 3 and 8. That looks pretty good right there. Look how much of this. If we would have left, if we would have just opened up this file and run our separations, we'd have such a heavy highlight white that it would really kill everything. So this is the first step. I'm going to go ahead and leave it with five. These numbers, remember, between three and eight can be anything, and it all depends on your image that you're working with. Next thing, let's go to Image, Adjustments, Hue Saturation. Here's the window we're going to deal with. Basically, all I want to do is pump up the saturation. I like to saturate, make sure my image has really good saturation of color. And what we can do is just go ahead and do that. We can kind of pump it up and take a look. We turn the preview checkbox off. Look at the color, how all the bricks and the, the yellow over here really starts to come out. Even this little guy's blue clothing, it just it really starts to pop. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it. It's about 20, anywhere from 20 to 23 on this image, it would look good. I'm gonna hit OK to that. Now we're gonna go to um, image, adjustments, brightness and contrast. Here's our little window here. Now what I want to do is I'm going to leave my brightness alone. We're going to move the contrast slider. I want to punch it up between four, five, just a little bit. And if you turn the preview off, once again, just like everything else, you can really see this very subtle pop. Remember what makes a good t-shirt is contrast. A good contrasted image it prints best on a shirt. So we're going to go ahead and leave it about five and I'm going to hit OK. Now the next thing would be adjustments, levels. <clears throat> what we're going to do here is set a black point and a white point in our image. So basically what I want to do is move my window so I can see most of the image here. Now I'm going to look at my image and say where should there be dead black? I want to set my black point. Basically I'm pretty much figuring it's going to be in this upper area of one of these door windows or these door openings. And then wherever there's white, probably in this lamp post, that looks pretty dead white to me. So um, and maybe a little bit over here in the back of this guy's shirt. So what we'll do now is let's hold the Option key or the Alt key down. Select this left slider, and look what happens to your screen. It really starts to wig out and kind of go crazy. What we want to do is slide it over until we have some good solid black areas. Look there on the on the right hand when, uh, door opening in the left one. You can see solid chunks of black. So I'm going to let go. We just set a black point to fit in here and over here. Now what I'm going to do is look for my white point. So do the same thing. Hold the Option key and the Alt key down. Grab this white slider and look. We already have white uh, inside that uh, lamp post and I got the back of the guy's shirt. So we're going to actually leave it slid over just ever so slightly. And I'm going to turn the preview on and off. Now look what that does. 
that really starts to make it snap. We hit OK to that. Now this photo is starting to come to life. Well, there's a little bit more work we need to do to it. <coughs> what that would mean is let's what, what that what we have to do now is just go to image. We're going to sharpen this image. So typically people would go up the the filter, sharpen, unsharp mask, and just run the sharp run the um, unsharp mask on this image. We don't want to do that because it can start blowing out some colors and really um, oversaturating and shooting out some of the pixels in our image. What we do want to do though is go to image, come down to mode. And let's go to lab color. And what we just did was we went from an RGB mode to a lab mode. You can see the file name up here changes. <clears throat> now let's go to window. I'm going to come down and show my channels. If yours are already open, then that, that'd be fine. But what I want to do is select my lightness channel. This is the luminosity in this image. This is where all the value happens. These are the color information, these other two channels. So we're going to select this lightness channel. Now what we're going to do is actually uh, run the sharpen filter on this channel. This way we won't have any weird color shifts or color fluctuations. So we're going to go for, to filter. Let's go to sharpen. Now we go to unsharp mask. <coughs> and obviously this is a, here's an amount, a radius, and a threshold sliders. The radius we're going to leave at one pixel. That's typical um, as far as um, Photoshop defaults go. What I'm going to do here is actually put it to three. My threshold to three. Now what this stuff does, obviously the amount, you know, uh, adjust the amount of sharpening. How much of sharpening we're going to add to the files. What the radius does, the radius selects how many pixels the filter will affect. So we're going to have, in other words, the filter is going to look for one pixel. And then the threshold means... Um, which pixels, uh, based on their difference with the surrounding pixels, that it will make an, it will uh, uh, adjust. So basically, we're selecting one pixel and we're going to sharpen the three pixels around it. That's pretty much how it works. Now, what I like to do is just working with the sharpen slider here, the amount. I'm going to probably go right about here on 87 or 90, between 85 and 90 is usually typically pretty good. Radius at one, threshold at three, and if I turn this preview box off. Look at the difference on screen. Watch how much more character. Just really, the vividness just pops. You see everything. So now what I'm going to do is hit OK to that. Now let's go. Let's go back and change this. Let's select all the colors here. Look at that image. Looks pretty awesome. Now what we're going to do is go back to mode and just turn it back to RGB color. Notice we don't lose anything. I'm just going to turn the channel's window off. Now basically these the all the settings we wanted to do are done and look at look how vivid look how, look at the character this building has. Now watch what happens when I go over here to file and I revert back to my original. Look at this. See what I'm talking about? This is major league upgraded. This is going to print terrifically. If you start off with an image that's optimized like this, you're going to get a great shirt. You want to do this or run these steps. Now remember the percentages and the pushing the numbers. Those are all be different depending on the image that you're working with. <clears throat> now what I would another thing I'd like to suggest while we're looking at this here is um, if you get an, an image, an original image, maybe the client gives you a, uh, a file that has three or four different layers on it. And maybe there's one photo of a car on one layer. And the building is maybe a photo, another photo on the back, on a different layer, and maybe there's a motorcycle on a third, whatever. And they want to make some kind of composition image. What you want to do is run these settings on each individual image, because it optimizes the white, the white point, the black point, and all the color data as it pertains to that particular image. Then you do it to the next file or the next layer and the next one and so on. You want to run them individually then composite them all together and that will be the best way you can do um, the best thing you can do for your image. So that's file optimization. It works whether you got a digital photo, scanned photo, or any kind of image that's painted into the computer.